Okay, if you hate everything and my car so much, why don't you just get out? This isn't funny. It's freezing, and it's dark out. Is this a joke? Does it look like a joke? Call an Uber. My jaw dropped as he sped off. I was waiting for the driver when I suddenly heard glass shattering and a loud alarm. I looked behind me and saw a man in a dark hood running out of a jewelry store. We both froze. Hi, I'm Layla from New York. Before I tell you the rest, don't forget to like and subscribe. I had a perfect family. I grew up in one of the most expensive penthouses in all of New York City. We had a personal chef, designer clothes, everything. My dad was the president of a huge company, and he loved my mom and I more than anything in the world. We had it all. But when I was five, my life turned upside down when my mom left and my dad started spending all his time at work. And a few years later, he married Gwendolyn, who was some random supermodel. And they started jetting off to exotic cities for her work every weekend. At first, I hated how they left all the time. I even tried going with them once. I'll pack up for the trip, Daddy. Oh, Layla, you didn't really think you were coming with us, did you? Tomorrow's my seventh birthday. Right, right. The housekeepers will make you the biggest cake you've ever seen. Toodaloo! But as I got older, I got used to them being gone for weeks. And eventually, I totally loved it. Who needed actual parents when you had their credit card? An empty house meant having epic karaoke parties, movie marathons, and makeover parties whenever I wanted. My parents didn't care as long as no one broke anything that cost more than $10,000. Having the best party house in an elite private school was like being royalty among royalty. Oh my god, Layla, your party this weekend was incredible! Incredible! When's the next one? Um, don't think I didn't see you break my stepmom's favorite vase. For you, there won't be a next one. Like any queen bee, I had to keep my hive in line. And most importantly, I had to have a super hot king by my side. So I had a boyfriend, Jackson, who was the heir to a massive family fortune. Hey, babe, want to take my dad's helicopter to the Bahamas this weekend? Ooh, the Bahamas. Should we ask our parents? <laughs> Good one. We even won prom king and queen two years in a row. I mean, it's not like it was a surprise. Life was totally perfect, but when I was 17, everything changed. Jackson was driving me home from dinner one night, and we got into the dumbest argument. He was always throwing tantrums. Okay, if you hate everything and my car so much, why don't you just get out? This isn't funny. It's freezing, and it's dark out. Is this a joke? Does it look like a joke? Call an Uber. My jaw dropped as he sped off. I was waiting for the driver when I suddenly heard glass shattering and a loud alarm. I looked behind me, and saw a man in a dark hood running out of a jewelry store. We both froze. He was turning to run when a huge gust of wind blew his hood off. I immediately noticed this huge scar on his forehead. Luckily, the alarm must have called the police. The flashing lights and sirens sent him running. I told the officers everything. They dropped me off at home. Jackson didn't take my call, and I had to sleep with all the lights on. The next morning, I woke up to the sound of someone banging on my door. It must be Jackson, begging for forgiveness. Surprise, surprise. You better have a whole bouquet of flowers for me. You're not Jackson. Two giant men in dark suits with gold badges were standing at my door. FBI, Layla, you need to come with us now. Is this about last night? I told the police everything. The man you saw is some psycho who's connected to robberies all over the city, and he's extremely dangerous. We've already contacted your parents. With your family's high profile, we're putting you in witness protection. Witness protection? Doesn't that only happen in movies? You'll be living with a new family in a discreet location until he's captured. He barely saw me. My dad will never allow this. Dad? Wait, what? Can't you just come home to protect me? Apparently, Gwendolyn signed all the paperwork and sent it to the FBI that morning without even asking me first. You can't do this to me. I wasn't even allowed to say goodbye to my friends or take my phone. The night dozed off in the car until we pulled up to a small house in the desert. A woman and a little girl stood at the door waving and holding up a handmade sign. Eunice? Who is Eunice? Welcome home. Miss Celia will tell you everything you need to know from here. Good luck. Walking into the house felt like the beginning of a nightmare. Everything was so old. Even the floorboards were creaking under my feet. I know this is probably a lot for you, Eunice, but we're here to make you feel like home. Um, okay, but where's the rest of your house? I can't believe I have a pretty big sister. Uh, don't mind Amy. She's only five and she is excited to meet you. I'm sure you're exhausted, but I was instructed to change your hair tonight. You need to be unrecognizable, Eunice. Are you kidding? I just got highlights. And please stop calling me Eunice. My name is Layla. Sorry, sweetheart. But according to your new identity, your name is Eunice. You're my niece who just moved here from a farm. And you have short green hair. Cool. 
I love green hair. I'm gonna be sick. Hopefully not too sick. You have to start school tomorrow. After hours of sobbing, I had no choice but to let Celia destroy my hair. Before school the next morning, Celia printed out a schedule and told me about my new identity. Whoa, whoa, whoa. AP Trigonometry Chess Club? You'll do great. Oh, and I packed you a sandwich for lunch. It's probably nothing as fancy as you're used to, but I think I make a mean PB&J. The best sandwich. Oh, and here's your phone. Don't try to sneak any texting to friends. It's only programmed to call me. A flip phone? Have a great first day. As if that wasn't enough, the students all looked so weird. Not a single person was wearing designer clothes. I guess I wasn't either. I shut the locker and jumped when I saw a tall guy with glasses and a plaid sweater standing right in front of me. Ah, who are you? Hi, I'm Edward. Eunice, right? I'm li- I mean, yeah, I am. How did you know? I'm the chess team captain. I heard we were getting a new student today, and you're the only person here I don't recognize. Small town. I don't need a greeting committee. I won't be staying long. Whoa, sorry. I thought I'd help the new girl, but if you've got it all figured out, I'll see you later. Great start, Eunice. If the nerds already hated me, I wouldn't dare try my luck with the popular girls. I ate lunch in the bathroom, alone. This is all Jackson's fault. I was so furious that I spent the rest of the day in a daze thinking about getting out and seeking my revenge. The final school bell snapped me out of it. Time for the worst part. We have a new member. Everyone, this is Eunice. She'll be my partner today. Earth Eunice, you go first. Oh, uh, right. Okay. I bumped a random piece up on the board. Um, I don't know what chess was like where you're from, but you can't do that. <sighs> My aunt made me join. I really don't care about this. Well, we care, and I don't have time for someone who doesn't want to be here. Uh, fine, whatever. I stormed out and looked for a phone booth since I couldn't use my own phone. There had to be a way to get out of here. I thought about calling Jackson or my dad until I realized they're the ones who got me here in the first place. Jackson abandoned me on the sidewalk, and Dad just straight up abandoned me. I gave up and went back home. I had the best day at school. We got to play outside, and I saw a rock that was bigger than my head. Okay, what about you? Did you make any new friends? Nope, but maybe a couple of enemies. I I told Celia that I didn't want to go to chess anymore. Although, seeing them all play did remind me how fun it was to play with my dad. Did I just call chess fun? One day, I was walking to the bathroom for another sad PB&J, but someone was blocking the door. Edward, you know this is the girls' bathroom, right? I just wanted to make sure you knew that it wasn't the cafeteria, since you eat lunch here every day. Small school, people talk. Well, that was humiliating. What do you want? Surprisingly, he apologized for being so harsh on the first day. He even offered me to join him for lunch, where they play chess as well. I never thought I'd say it, but it was way better than eating alone in a bathroom. Edward even walked me home after school, and I saw Celia spying at us through the window before he dropped me off. Someone's making friends. Does he want to have a play date with me? Um, I'll ask him. Edward and I started spending more time together, and it was fun. And I started to look forward to school, and I had to admit, it was nice not having friends who only looked for status, and where I had to dress up like I was going to a fashion show every day. <laughs> And once, as I prepared to leave for school, I saw Celia braiding Amy's hair, and it reminded me of my mom. I gathered myself and took my bag to leave. Okay, bye mom! Bye mom! Mm, I mean, um, before I knew it, Celia was hugging me. I'm sorry, my tears are getting your shirt wet. It's just that my real mom was the last person to actually take care of me. We don't have the nicest things, but we have a lot of love to give, and we love you. Yeah, you're my sister. I pulled Amy in with us. I could have stayed there all day. I was so happy. Even in school, after weeks of practicing with Edward, we were finally ready to have a real match. I asked Celia if he could come over to play at the house after school. The FBI agent said as long as I kept my cover up, it was fine. Hi, Edward. We heard a lot about you. I cleared off the table for you guys to play. Edward, are you staying for dinner? I don't know why that made me nervous, or why my mind suddenly flashed to Jackson. Please, does Jackson deserve loyalty after what he did? Yeah, he will stay for dinner. Edward beat me, of course, but the real fun was watching him with Amy during dinner. Rock, paper, scissors! <laughs> I win! Was he always this cute? After dinner, Celia let us walk to get ice cream so Edward could show me around more. He wanted me to see the fountain he made wishes in as a kid, but right as we were about to throw coins in, something stopped me. Wait, do you hear that? There's a rustling sound. Edward stepped in front of me, and that's when I saw a dark figure, and my heart raced with anticipation of the man with the scar to come out and- Jackson? What are you doing here? Layla, I felt terrible for what I did, so I came to rescue you. You're not safe here. You know this this guy? Wait, why is he calling you Layla? Um, well, I'm not really allowed to tell you. Is this real? My ex-boyfriend and my... I, I don't even know what. Quick, 
read this. Someone dropped it at my door a few days ago, and I've been looking for you ever since. Tell Layla. I found out her new identity. I know all about the mom and the little girl, and I will find her. He found me. The psycho with the scar. I hired an investigator to find you. The FBI said we could fly to one of my dad's islands until it was safe. The helicopter is waiting. I'm never one to run from a fight, but what about Celia and Amy and Edward? As long as I was here, they were in danger too. I'm sorry, Edward. I have to go. Jackson grabbed my hand and we ran. I couldn't bring myself to look back. Before I knew it, we landed in front of one of Jackson's beautiful island mansions. Ah, look at you. You need a proper makeover and these green hairs look like snot. You belong to me. Yeah, I mean here, not in some middle of nowhere loser town. I I think I need to lie down. Jackson got me new clothes, fixed my hair, and even brought his personal chef to cook us five-star meals. Wasn't this what I had been missing? So why did I keep thinking about Celia and those silly peanut butter sandwiches? You could at least say thank you. I'm basically your hero. I didn't really mind living there, you know. <laughs> Very funny. Our dinner was interrupted by someone pounding on the door. Jackson jumped out of his chair to look out the window. Oh no. FBI, open the door. FBI? What did you do? He tried to block me, but I pushed past him to open the door. Good, you're safe. Celia thought something terrible happened to you. We've been looking for you for days along with your dad. We asked him to wait for you at home. But Jackson said I showed them the letter. Miss, the man you identified has been on trial for a few days. We were waiting until he was in prison to tell you it was safe to return. There's no way he could have written that letter without us knowing. Yeah, I can explain! Jackson, you ruined everything again! I had a family who cared about me, friends who wanted me for more than just parties. Why do you even care? You got me into this mess. Because, because... No one walks away from me! Only I can decide that! I am Jackson St. Germain! I always get what I want, and I still want you! Walked away? I was in witness protection! I didn't even have a phone! You're insane! The agents had to put Jackson in handcuffs to put an end to one of his famous tantrums. Get him out of here! The FBI told everyone I was safe and took me back to my penthouse in New York. Walking through the empty rooms, I thought about Celia and Amy, and I suddenly understood the difference between a house and a home. My baby Layla, I'm so sorry for not being here with you all this time. I can't go back to the time that has passed. I know I was so focused on work because I was trying not to miss your mom, and I didn't realize how much you had grown up. You look just like your beautiful mom. And when I got to know that you were in the witness protection program, I used all my connections to find the scumbag bandit as soon as possible. And when I found out you'd gone missing, I realized what a terrible father I am. Oh, Dad, you'll always be my dad. But I really want to go back to finish high school with Celia. My dad accepted as long as I had a bodyguard for protection. There was just one thing I had to do before going home. Driver, can you please make a stop at the local jail? You better tell them to let me out! Tell them it's a mistake! I cut him off with a well-deserved slap across the face. Clearly, he hadn't learned any lessons yet, but he was super rich. I knew he'd be bailed out in no time, but not by me. Bye, Jackson. It was time to reveal my big plan. Layla, it's beautiful. I took Celia and Amy's blindfolds off and revealed a brand new house by the fountain in the park. My dad wanted to make up for his absence, so he paid to build a big house with everything the three of us could need. And yeah, I did ask for a walk-in closet. A girl can only change so much. Do I have a playroom? You have two. Wow! I still can't believe your name is actually Layla, and you did all this just for some chess-playing nerds in a small town. Don't flatter yourself too much. It was for all you nerds in this beautiful small town. Let's head inside. I'm kind of craving a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs>